Right, just as a warning, there's a postscript at the end of this video. Please feel free to watch through to the end. Right then, hello there, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, whatever it is, whenever you are watching this video. My name is Paul, I'm also called Knickknack, I'm the brains behind Knickknack's Old Peculiar, the possibly the longest running, most boringly repetitive blog you are ever going to come across on the entire internet, and the YouTube channel at MrCurdy2977. Thank you for watching this video, and thank you for keeping your eyeballs open for Knickknack's Daily Teaser, the daily teaser quizzes I do. Thank you for keeping an eyeball out on some of the TV reviews I do. I'm watching a, a classic Doctor Who story called The Crusade at the moment, and my next video review of episode 3 will be out on Saturday night, so you might want to keep your eyeballs on that. I also occasionally watch films, and if I'm feeling really slightly perverse, I will watch a documentary film that's crowdfunded and about a TV movie. Yes, I have managed to see Doctor Who Am I, written and performed and mostly filmed with help by a chap called Matthew Jacobs. And if you're not a Doctor Who fan, he's the guy that wrote the Doctor Who TV movie with Paul McGann that aired back in 1996. Last night was Wednesday night, and it's to catch Doctor Who Am I. Tonight is where I'm going to tell you about what I thought. Doctor Who Am I opens with a field of stars and a montage of audio clips from various episodes of Doctor Who spread over the show's 60-year history then closes in on San Francisco's Golden Gate Bridge. It then shows us my writer Matthew Jacobs as he and his fellow producer Vanessa Yule prepare to move some of his belongings out of storage. He's soon to move house and, as he's the writer of the 1996 Doctor Who TV movie, do something he's not done before. He's going to man up and go to a couple of US Doctor Who conventions. After brushing up on his own history, his father, Anthony Jacobs, played Doc Holliday in The Gunfighters, the 1960s William Hartnell adventure, and he's also taking in brief chats or brief conversations with the movie's producer, Philip Segal, and with cast members Paul McGann, Daphne Ashbrook, Dr. Rose Holloway, and Eric Roberts, who played the master. After brushing up on that little lot, Matthew has to face the one thing he's been nervous about for quite some time. The fans. Now, what did I make of Doctor Who Am I? Did I go in to watch it as nervously as Matthew Jacobs did? Well, yes. I was expecting... I don't know what I was expecting, I'll be honest there. I was vaguely prepared to be slightly freaked out and slightly insulted, vaguely feeling I, as a Doctor Who fan, would be shown up by a documentary that shows us as being extremely odd. Although it has to be said about the weirdest pe person, bless him, was Eric Roberts, who played the master in the 96 movie. It looked like him, he was wearing sunglasses indoors. That's about the weirdest person I saw there. Instead of that, it shows us a bunch of fans who are keen to, let's be honest, dress up and cosplay, and far more openly about it, or enthusiastic about the show, than their UK counterparts. I last went to a convention quite a few years ago, and as one fan points out, most British fans look, they've like, look like they've walked in off the street wearing jeans and a t-shirt, and maybe an anorak. American fans, by comparison, do like to dress up and show amazing creativity in so doing. One couple attended a convention with their baby, it must have been about three months old, in a custom-made Dalek Khan pram. That bloody thing must have taken a lot of work and looked absolutely fantastic. And it didn't hurt that the baby looked incredibly cute as well. It's quite something. Another fan as well was visited at home um, making a resin mould so he could build multiple model TARDISes. 
Um, uh, and he also had uh, a very accurate K1 robot in his garage from uh, Tom Baker's first story as the Doctor uh, back in the 70s from Robot. US fans seem both more enthusiastic, seem quite happy to dress up, and seem somewhat more confessional as well about their lives, about what brought them to the show than UK fans, or at least in my limited experience. It reminds me of, let's be blunt, it reminds me of some of the Alcoholics Anonymous meetings I've been to. As for Michael Jacobs himself, Doctor Who Am I shows how some fans feel about the show. Feel it's at one extreme, feel it's literally an entertaining bit of TV with some interesting stuff going on. And at the other end, how they found it a safe space during tough childhood, something Jacobs himself says he can sympathise with. He's a fan who was lucky enough to visit the set when his father was working on the show, but also a fan sharing the fact his father was bipolar and a fan who lost his mother to suicide a few years after that set visit. You can see why he was nervous about attending a convention or two. The TV movie still gets mixed reactions from fans, but you can also see that he fit right in with the rest of a very welcoming Foul family. Doctor Who Am I may not be the most revelatory documentary, although it does have nice touches to it. It's very engrossing. It may not be the best crowd-funded film that I've ever seen. The only one I have watched is The Utterly Beautiful Troll Bridge, and I still urge you to go and see that. But Doctor Who Am I is a very watchable 80 minutes of documentary, and one that is worth your time, I think, whether you're a fan of Doctor Who or otherwise. Go check it out, folks. Have a very good evening. Just as a final thought, um, Eric Roberts' version of The Master is something I found, granted it's been a while since I've seen the 96 movie, but Eric Roberts' version of The Master was, from what I remember, quite interesting. Um... Roger Delgado and Anthony Angley played the character as a sort of a a gentleman cad, an evil version of the saint. John Sim, Michelle Gomez and Sasha Dewan played him as a dribbling loon. Very entertainingly as a dribbling loon, but nonetheless uh, a dribbling loon sort of incarnate. They've been chewing the carpet for most of their appearances. Robert puts in a performance as a very high-powered Time Lord mafiosi, a Time Lord thug. It's, he, his performance is one that you can just imagine, you can just see his version thumping somebody with a baseball bat just because they annoyed him. Right, as I said in the main body of the video and accompanying blog post, it's been a while since I've been to a convention. I've never had the money or had the time when I have had the money to go to as many as I'd like. Uh, most of the earlier ones I went to back in the 90s and 80s were very male-dominated and saw most of us in jeans and t-shirts. Um, the last one I went to was about a decade ago and was pleasantly surprising because there were girls there. Which sounds shocking now I put it that way, but there were women quite happily going to a a Doctor Who convention that previously had been quite male-dominated. There were even a few women there, girls there, in um, in cosplay. He'd gone in cosplay as various versions of the Doctor, and one young woman who'd gone as Anthony Angley's version of the Master. Uh, although she she did have to keep sticking her beard back on. It was nice to see either way. Who am I? 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 Who am